Hi, how's it going? In today's lesson, we're going to do the Android Developer Fundamentals 1.2 Part B, the Layout Editor. This is a continuation of uh, 1.2 Part A, where we created our Hello Toast app. So let's go to Android Studio. And what we're doing is opening the previous Hello Toast app. Uh, if you don't have this already, you should go through the, the previous two videos. Or um, if you go to looking at the introduction video, I point out the website where this uh, course is based. It's version two of this course. And what we're doing is there's source code that you can download. So if you didn't do the previous videos, you can always download the source code using those links from the introduction video. All right, so you should see something similar to this. If you don't have the activity main uh, file open, uh, it's gonna be over here in the project window. Uh, make sure you have Android filter set up and then we're going to uh, the res folder and then the layout folder and it's activity underscore main. Here I'm looking at the text view. You may see it in design view. Go ahead and choose design and We've been here before. This is the layout editor. In the layout editor, there are a number of things you can do. Obviously, we've looked at a few of these already, but what I wanna call out are a few of these other tools here at the top within this window. So here you can select what you're looking at. We're looking at design and blueprint, or you could look at just the blueprint. You could look at the design, um, however you want to do it. If you look at both design and blueprint here, you're going to see uh, the constraints so that when you're dealing with the layout, you'll see kind of how the constraints are organized. The next button to the right is this orientation button and you can choose between portrait and landscape. So let's go ahead and choose landscape and see how that looks. So it looks okay. Uh, Notice to the next of that, we can choose a device. So we're kind of simulating a device. So if you go through here, um, there's obviously a bunch of different phones. You've even got, uh, these are what, these are high density phones. And then you've got tablets and even the watch, Android Wear and Android TV. So there are a number of things you could do to kind of simulate the layout for each of these devices. So, for example, if I check like a smaller resolution device, notice what happens. So let's take a look at this. Let's look at this in portrait and everything's all good. And then let's look at it in landscape. Notice what's happening. Um, this is bumping up into the text because of the size of this text area. It's uh, bumping into everything. So we want to fix that. Well, Android gives us a way to do that by using what are called layout variations. A layout variation means when I am in portrait, load this file. When I am in landscape, load this file. Or if I'm on a tablet, load this file. If I'm on a TV, load a different layout file. So let's look at how to do that. If we want to go to, um, sorry, not the device, but the orientation button, and I can choose, it says create landscape variation. So go ahead and do that now. Let's see what happened. Okay, it created uh, another activity main and it's in a folder called land. If I go over to my res folder and choose layout, notice now it has two layout files. Well, if I were to look at the project filter and and then I go down here now, if you didn't, if you didn't see this, it would be under app and then source and then main and then res, notice what happens. I have layout and then I have layout dash land. So I have two separate files in two separate folders. Notice the file name is the same, but because they're in a different folder, I can keep the same name. And the reason for that is that the code file still points to the activity underscore main dot XML. But the operating system says, well, instead of loading this default activity main, I'm going to load the landscape activity main whenever my device is in landscape mode. 
So we have this orientation. Let's go ahead and fix this. Um, go ahead and I'm here in design view. I'm still make sure you have the under the landscape activity main. Choose text. And over here on the right, you can choose preview and you can get a sense for it. So let's change this text view and we're going to fix this and we're going to change this by saying text size. If I double click into that and I say 120 SP, notice what happens. It now fits a lot better. So let's see then how that works. I can, I, since I have this preview design view here, I can, I can change the orientation. Well, guess what? If I go to portrait, then here I am back in my original uh, activity underscore main. But if I go back to landscape, it loads the landscape activity main. So that's how we can handle a different orientation or a different layout variant, as it's called. Okay, what about on a tablet? So if I select my little preview and I go down here to my Nexus 7, notice what happens. Um, the fonts are quite a bit smaller. Now, obviously, if you have a real device, you'll see this a lot easier. If you connect your device to USB, you could connect multiple devices, right? And you can run it on your phone and your tablet. You will see this type of behavior. Well, the problem is, check this out. It's the font is too small and things are, you know, we're unable to uh, see it as clearly. So we can create a variation for tablets. To do that, let's go to our orientation button and notice down here it says create tablet variation. So go ahead and do that now. Guess what? If you look over here in your uh, source folder, here I am still on the project filter and then I go notice what happened. It created another folder with activity underscore main. Now this time it's saying I have dependent uh, density independent pixels of 600 width. If the screen width is 600 dp or wider, that means I want to treat this as a tablet. And the way this works is it determines uh, the width, and again, it's de uh, density independent. So this is a general rule to say anything larger than that is going to be a tablet. Well. Now, now I have three activity main files to work with. So uh, let me go back to the Android filter. Notice what happens under the layout. It, it indicates that you have, here's the file, but here's three variations. And you can switch in between. Well, then how does the code behind it reference the right file? Well, Notice, remember, we can click here to see the related Java file. Well, look, the Java file is still the same. And then if I can click here, I can see the related XML files. Now I have these three. The operating system decides for us which ones to load. So I can have multiple layouts depending on the device size and orientation. Awesome. Okay, go back to the tablet and let's go back to the design view. Um, Notice over here, you've got, um, now things are kind of getting a little crowded. If you had a larger screen, you know, you could resize the window and things. But uh, we do have a little zoom button and there is kind of this little uh, nav bar here. Um, so I can also use my scroll wheel and now I can see things a little better. There's uh, a few things that we want to do in order to change up. When I select an item, notice what happens when I deselect an item. Uh, we didn't see this little menu. Now I have this little menu below that gives me more things I can do in a so related to elements on the screen. Um, the first thing we want to do is notice where it says uh, turn on auto connect. This should be off. We don't want auto connect on. Auto connect means, hey, I'm going to guess which constraints you want and then I'm going to do it for you. And you may or may not like that. We don't necessarily want that to happen. This already has a bunch of constraints because what it did is it copied the original activity main and it created a new one in a new folder that we can now modify. So there's a button right here that says clear all constraints. Go ahead and select clear all constraints. 
So now, when I look at these, um, the constraints are there. Well, what happens is if I change orientation, uh, no more constraints, right? Everything's off screen, things are not lined up properly. Well, if we want to fix this, we're going to change this layout for tablets. Let's select the text view, let's scale this down a little bit. Uh, let's take our count button and let's move this. Whoops, let's move it up. Here we go. Kind of has some fun little rendering when you move things too fast. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, oh. Anyway, it's just a representation. It's not, you know, you want to definitely get a sense for how it works. Okay. First, let's start with the uh, toast button. And um, you may or may not be seeing all of the attributes. You, remember, you can look at the bottom of this list and say view fewer attributes. And here we can see kind of a highlight of some main ones. Or you can say view all attributes and you can see the whole list. I want to see all the attributes. I want to make a couple of changes. Notice the layout width is currently hard-coded. Um, because the constraint, you remember in the previous videos, we said match constraint. Well, when there's no constraints, it just kind of defaults to a, a, a width, and that's what that is. Well, we don't want that. We want to select and change layout width, and I want to say uh, wrap content. So now my layout width is wrapping content in relation to this. If I select my count button, I can also do the same thing and I can say wrap content. I want to make sure, whoops, cancel that. There's too many buttons going on. Wrap content. Okay, just make sure that says wrap content. Okay, now uh, with both of these buttons, we want to change the size of the text. So if I come down here and uh, I want to say text size, so I scroll down here and text size, I want to say 60 SP. When you're dealing with text, you're going to use SP, which stands for SP. So <laughs> it refers to density independent pixels, and I am at a loss for what the SP means. That's different than DP. DP is the same principle, but you use DP for the element size. Just keep that in mind. They're two different things, but they relate to the same idea, which is on all the devices, they look relatively the same width and height. All right, so we set that to 60. We're going to set this one to 60 SP. Press return, enter. Okay, I want to zoom in a little bit more so that we can set these constraints. Let's fix our constraints. Um, for, for fun, let's just click and drag things here. If I select this toast button and I click, and then I drag to the left, and now I have a constraint to the left, and I drag a constraint to the top, now I'm anchored to the top and left. For the count button, what we want to do is align these two buttons so that what is called the uh, baseline is is uh, aligned. If I if I notice how when I mouse over it, there's this little button, and it says Edit Baseline. The baseline refers to where the text set, sits in relation to the button. And what I want is I want both of the buttons to align so that the baselines are the same. If I click from here, come on, click. Edit baseline. Notice how there's this little extra indicator. If I create a connection, if I click and drag, now I'm connecting to this baseline. Notice what happened. It automatically moved my button. Now I have a constraint that says from this baseline to this baseline, I want them to be aligned. So now everything, uh, it horizontally and vertically aligns. Well, I should say it what is this? Uh, vertically aligns because they're both the same location up and down, right? Next, 
uh, let's update our text view so we can create a constraint to the whoops that's not what I meant we want to click the little button and click a constraint here we want to click this little button at the top and click a constraint to our toast and then let's create a constraint to the right and a constraint to the bottom now notice um, we need to fix this because it's not resizing its width or height remember what to do if I come over here if I, I select my text view and I go to my attributes, let's look at this, let's you view fewer attributes. Right now, because I removed the constraints before, I need to set this. I'm gonna say match constraint and match constraint. All right, so now, let me zoom out a little bit. So now we have a different layout that's unique to tablets. You can test this on your own if I change from portrait to landscape. So now I have a different layout. So the buttons are a little uh, more in control. They're not all over the place and the sizes are a normal size. And then I can go back to portrait and it looks like that. So today we've reviewed the layouts, how to create a layout variation. We created a landscape variation that uh, allows you to change the size. You can you can modify whatever you want whenever you're in landscape. For the in this case, it's for phones. Um, we have our default, which is remain the same, and then we've created a tablet variation. All right, I hope that was helpful. We're going to uh, look for the next video. Be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends and tell your enemies and uh, leave any comments. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them as, as best I can. And thanks for watching. Did you, did you, have you liked it yet? Or subscribed? Awesome. Thank you.